What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for October 2018. If you're not familiar, every month I part out a couple PCs that you could buy the parts for and put together yourself at home. Just FYI, I'm not building the systems today, so check out my builds playlist if you want to see me put a system together. I have plenty of those available. And I'm actually gonna start off today's video a little bit differently than I usually do, because I'm gonna do a quick unboxing right now. Corsair's new Vengeance RGB Pro Series DDR4 memory gives you blazing fast speed and dynamic multi-zone RGB lighting with 10 ultra-bright LEDs per module. Customization options are practically endless with the Corsair IQ software package and they're available with black or white heat spreaders. Find out more about the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro Series via the sponsor link in the description. So if it's not already obvious, this is the Core i9, the newest Intel processor, 9th gen. It's a Coffee Lake refresh, it's still 14 nanometer, uh, but it is eight cores and 16 threads. As you can see, performance unleashed for Paul's hardware. This is uh, a review kit sent directly to me. Unfortunately, we don't have the actual dodecahedron or whatever the, the retail packaging is, but we do have the important part, which is the processor right there in the middle. So I now have a 9900K. I can't share any performance numbers about the CPU yet, but I can do a theoretical parts list for build if you are absolutely dead set on buying this processor. Now this video series is still based on your feedback, so I do have a straw poll linked in the video description about what PCs you guys wanna see in November. It's gonna be Black Friday or at least Black Friday month, so I've got a few price points listed there, uh, as well as potentially Skylake X high core count CPUs that were announced, the 28 core W3175X, uh, or maybe a bang for the buck 9600K build. If you're interested in AMD builds, honestly, I think I have you guys covered for that today. Um, so I'm not gonna probably go over new ones of those next month, but we'll, we'll see uh, what prices you guys are actually interested in. This is the straw poll for last month for October, and everyone wanted to see the update to the late 2018 best or fastest gaming PC possible, so I definitely have that. I did that build last month before the 9900K was available and this, the video did very well, so gotta follow up on that. And then of course, bang for the buck, Ryzen plus on-sale GPUs. And then I also wanted to include the $800 PC because it did seem like a fair amount of people were interested in that. But let's jump into it with the first build here. Uh, I did $1,000 and $800 for a bang for the buck AMD build, and I'm basing these both around the Ryzen 7 1700 because it is on sale for a really good price right now, $180. And this is still eight cores and 16 threads, and it's still overclockable. So you can get very comparable performance to like an 1800X or a 2700X if you overclock this CPU a little bit. I didn't include an aftermarket cooler because we are trying to stick to sub $1,000, and right now it's coming out to about 970, um, but adding that on might give you some better overclocking in the future. If you're looking at other CPUs available for this platform, you can see that for eight cores, you really can't get better than the 1700 right now. You gotta spend an extra 40 bucks to claw your way up to the 1700X, and even more than that if you want a 2700 or 2700X, and I think the high core and thread count is really one of the things you should go for if you're considering investing in this platform, and you want a mid to high end PC out of it. This is a look at the mother boards that are available for this platform and if you're looking down in the low end there's quite a few that are available down here but if you're going for an 8 core you probably want some better power delivery and for that reason I'd recommend sticking to the uh, motherboards that have good reviews and that are probably more in the 80 to 100 dollar range. I actually chose this Asus ROG board because it does have some nicer features and it's uh, got, a, got a nice look. It's got very good power delivery for overclocking. Um, of course this is about 120 dollars. You could get away with something a little bit cheaper and I will follow up in the second 800 dollars build with some more recommendations for that. As for video card for a $1,000 PC, I would be looking at either a GTX 1070 or the AMD Radeon Vega 56. Um, I'm looking for both of those here. The Vega 56, unfortunately, is still about $420 at its lowest price. You can get a 1070 though for $360 at the cheapest, or maybe $380. The $360 version here is thanks to a $30 mail-in rebate, and this is the mini version from Gigabyte, so I would take a look at some of those $380 variants as well if you want to get a, one that might overclock a little bit better out of the box. And then rounding things out for the rest of the build, we have a 16 gig memory kit that's 3200 speed. You want faster memory and a 16 gig kit is kind of my starting out point these days if you're not going super budget. I have a 500 gig SSD, which will be plenty enough to get you by and get some systems loaded up. Maybe supplement that with a mechanical drive if you have an old one lying around that you can reformat. And then we have about $60 on our case. I chose the NZ NZXT H500 because it's a solid black case. By the way, this whole system would be pretty much all black with the option to turn on RGB if you wanted to. 
And then finally we have a 550 watt power supply. It's 80 plus bronze rated. This one's a very good deal at about $33 after a mail-in rebate. It is not modular, but it does have all black cables. So if you wanted to spend a few more dollars on the power supply, you definitely could get something that's a little bit nicer than this, uh, but this will get you by. If you want to spend a few more bucks, maybe look into a 650 watt ver version and then uh, modular power supplies are also very convenient. So that's my list for the $1,000 version, but uh, people were looking at an $800 variant. Here is that. It's only slightly different in a few ways. So I went with a slightly less expensive motherboard. I went with an eight gig memory kit instead of 16 gigs. And then we've dropped down from the GTX 1070 to an AMD Radeon RX 580 eight gig, which you can get for 230 bucks these days, which is a good price. So I'm just gonna go over the parts that are different from the $1,000 build, starting with the motherboard Board. This is an ASRock X370 Pro 4. ASRock actually did a really good job with their lower end uh, X370 and B350 boards when it comes to power delivery. They're some of the only ones at the low end that are actually pretty sufficient. And it's also got features you'd want, like it's still got M.2 support and everything. Uh, it is a standard ATX board, so it'll fit in the case, and it's uh, all black and white. For about 80 bucks, or I guess $82 if you go for the mail-in rebate, uh, it'll get the job done, and it shaves 25 or 30 bucks off of the total price, which is part of the thing that gets us down under 800. For memory, I went with a slightly slower uh, kit. This is a 3000 speed kit rather than 3200, so you get a little bit of a drop off in performance, but not too bad. And you can get this for about $91 right now, and it is a kit that will work uh, out of the box with Ryzen. You just gotta plug in the XMP values. Again, this is an eight gig kit versus 16, and of all the parts that I dropped down for this less expensive build, I'd probably stick with the 16 gigs over this if you have that choice, but this will get you by, and um, if you, money is uh, tight, then, then you gotta have memory, so that's just something that'll work for you. Finally, for the graphics card, if you're dropping down from a 1070, basically you're gonna drop down either to an AMD Radeon RX 580 eight gig or an NVIDIA GTX 1060 six gig. If you look at the prices for both of those, they're actually really comparable. About 230 to $240 is where they start. And depending on the games you're playing, these cards kind of trade blows back and forth. I opted for the RX 580 because I also like to think that in the future you might consider something like a FreeSync monitor and FreeSync monitors are much cheaper. So if you're not planning on eventually upgrading to a RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti in the future, then the RX 580 from AMD Radeon could in the future be paired with a FreeSync monitor, which you can get much cheaper and like a 1440 FreeSync monitor would go great with that. So that's why I chose that. But of course, easily swap in the GTX 1060 six gig if you have a, a G-Sync monitor already or if you just like NVIDIA better. And now the fastest computer you can possibly build right now, or at least theoretically so. Again, I wanna point out a couple very important caveats to this build. One, I am not endorsing buying the i9-9900K right now. It has not been independently tested. Please wait for independent review tests to come out. That said, it's pretty safe to assume at this point that the 9900K will be the best choice if all you're concerned about is gaming on a single graphics card and you want the best gaming performance possible. That's pretty reasonable to assume right now. We don't know how much better it will be. We don't know if the 8700K will still be a better choice by comparison. That said, someone's gonna buy this. There are people who are like, I want that, I wanna get it now, and I don't even care that Newegg's pre-order price is 580 freaking dollars. Wow, that sucks, Newegg. That's way higher than it was supposed to be. Pre-orders, when it was first going on, were like 520 to 530 dollars, but it's literally the only place that has it available right now, so that is impacting the overall cost of this system, which is close to 3,000 dollars. If you're comparing that to my fastest build possible from a month or month and a half ago, uh, that was about $2,400. So yes, it costs more now, but what can you do? You gotta, you gotta pay for the best, I guess. Um, also wanna point out that when it comes to fastest gaming PC possible, the uh, CPU is gonna be one very important factor. And then the graphics card, of course, is gonna be another very important factor. The RTX 2080 Ti is the fastest graphics card right now. But beyond that, I'm trying to keep things somewhat reasonable. So I'm not like assuming you're gonna be doing LN2 overclocking. I'm not even assuming you're gonna be doing full custom water cooling on this. This is still air-cooled parts for the most part, except for an all-in-one liquid cooler for the CPU. And I've chosen aftermarket GPUs, uh, like this Asus Strix 
GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, which has a custom PCB, so it's got better power delivery. And we have now discovered that the Founders Edition cards are a little bit more picky about doing custom vBIOS updates. And there have been vBIOSes released that have higher power limits that allow you to overclock the cards better, or at least go higher frequencies if you have adequate cooling. And the aftermarket cards are much more capable of accepting those aftermarket vBIOSes, as well as, of course, just running at higher speeds overall because they are overbuilt. And the OC versions that ship overclocked have the bin GPUs uh, that promise they will be overclocked. One last thing to point out is that the highest of the high-end GPUs have not been launched for the RTX 2080 Ti yet. So EVGA is probably going to come out with a Kingpin Classified, uh, Gigabyte's probably going to have an Aorus Extreme and so on. And those will probably be the fastest of the fastest, but we got to work with what we have for now. So that said, let's quickly run down this list. Of course, the 9900K at the top, and uh, if you buy this, you will at least hopefully get this cool dodecahedron packaging, which is just kind of fun. Uh, we want to keep things cool, so I did upgrade the liquid cooler. This is actually adding $100 to the price of this build, so bear that in mind too. But this is the Master Liquid ML360R, which I thought would be a nice match with the case that I chose, and I also have this on hand, so I can build this system, which is nice. It is $160, bucks, so a little on the higher end for an all-in-one liquid cooler. Uh, for a motherboard, we've got the Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate from ASRock, and this is about $290. If you're wondering why I chose it, this is part of the reason. I physically have it here with me, so so I can actually, again, build the system with it. This is on the higher end again for motherboard. You could probably get by with something more in the 180 to $220 range, but since I'm planning to build this system, that's what I'm going with. And the Z390 boards have not been widely tested for their power delivery systems yet. This one I'm pretty confident will be adequate for overclocking the 9900K at the highest level. So that is why I have chosen it. But of course, peruse other motherboards if you aren't interested in this one. For memory, I've gone with the 16 gig kit. This is DDR4 30. 3600 and actually when I was looking at higher speed memory I found the 3600 speed memory had some pretty good deals on it even the RGB variant uh, this is only $160 right now on Newegg that's a pretty good deal this actually doesn't have the best latency it's cast latency 19 so as always reality check your memory choice and get the fastest speed for the most reasonable price but that's a, a good kit I would recommend for our storage configuration I once again have an m.2 NVMe SSD for our main operating system that's a 500 gig drive this is basically the same stuff that I chose last month but about $155 for that, and then a one terabyte drive for our game storage for about $137. And then of course the graphics card, uh, we got the Asus GeForce RTX 2080 Ti Strix. This is the overclocked edition. Again, I chose this graphics card because I have it, so I can use it for the build. For the price, I've entered $1250 because these uh, 2080 Ti's are impossible to find right now. You're supposed to be able to get a 2080 Ti for as little as $1,000, but that's a pipe dream at the moment. You should be able to get one for as little as $1,200, theoretically, if you're just okay with going with the uh, Founders Edition. Uh, but the aftermarket overbuilt versions like this have been uh, mostly selling for around $1,200 to $1,250, so that's why I put that price in there. Finally, we have our case, just went with the same case we built with before the Lian Li PC-011 uh, Der Bauer Edition uh, in white, and then I got a 650 watt EVGA Supernova power supply. This is actually a slightly different power supply because it's a better one for less expensive, so wanted to update it to that. It's fully modular and again, of course, all black cables. So guys, there you have it once again, my builds for October 2018. If you want the fastest single GPU gaming PC that you can get right now, you want a 9900K that you overclock as fast as you can within reason, and a 2080 Ti that you do just about the same thing with. Of course, you're paying a lot of money for this, so please bear in mind that my first two builds today were $800 and $1,000 that are still perfectly adequate gaming PCs that you don't need to spend three grand on and also try to chase down parts that are very difficult to find right now. That said, people are always interested in what is the fastest thing you can build right now. So I will be putting the system together and doing some testing on it later this month. So thank you guys for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you wanna see that when it comes out in the future. And uh, that, oh, and links to all the stuff I talked about today is in the description below. Thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you next time.